get Yo, everybody to sway. This is the big league now. Mm -hmm. This is where the whole world is going to be watching. This is the one that can make and break a career. I want to welcome him to the show. The one and only Jerron Boots in this, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, 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 yes. Come hey, on. What's going on? What's going what up? on, everybody? <laughs> hey, 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 Jerron, how you feeling, bro? Welcome to Bridge Business. Uh, I'm feeling great. Uh you know, ready to rock and roll on April 10th. That's all. <laughs> April 10th is the big day. Um, uh, listen, this is it, man. You got an undefeated record, 26 and 0, 24 KOs. And it's interesting because still people doubt you. They talk mm -hmm. about who you fought. Have you really fought a real contender? You know, mm -hmm. and with Sergey, you about to step up to somebody who's been in the ring with Mikey Garcia. You know, he is a welterweight now. He came up. This is going to be a true test of your skill. Um, how are you pro approaching this any different than any other fight you had? Are you prepping differently? Um, it's the same thing. Ain't nothing, nothing going to change. I work hard for all of my fights. When I was, when I turned pro, I, I trained for a fighter just like I was uh, fighting for a world title. So that, I've been like this my whole career. So we just doing a little bit more, like, uh, uh, sharpen up things and, and working on different things to, uh, to annihilate my opponent. Mm -hmm. and that's about it <laughs> that's, what are you sharpening up on man when i see you fight man you got uppercuts you got left jabs you got you could switch up you know what yeah. are you working on uh we, we work on everything like i say you uh like i always say you can't just train one way for one fighter just because uh he only fights one way you never know he might pop up and, and fight a different way so we train all around the board so I, we work on defense uh speed power me boxing, uh, me going forward, and yeah, just a lot of lot of jabs and stuff like that. Just the stuff that's gonna help me in a, in this fight and help me uh, win in a dominating fashion and, and get an explosive knockout. Hey, okay. dude, you you being twenty six and zero with twenty four KOs. Where are you ranked in the WBA, WBC? Where they rank you at? Far as in ranking? Um, um I'm not, I don't really check that stuff, <laughs> but I think I know I'm like I think I'm like seven in WBO or six. Mm -hmm. I think the IBF, I'm like 10 or 11, and I think WBA, I'm like 7 or 8. The WBO, like they, they got him at 7 on the WBO. They got him at 12 on the WBC. And um, I understand that. And I mean, they lining these dudes up for you. You you yeah. knocking them out like you're supposed to, right? Now, and if you was yeah. having trouble with any of these guys that they lining you up, then they'd be like, hey, Boots maybe ain't that guy, but you're doing yeah. your job, you know? So I wonder why they ain't offering these bigger fights to you. You've been doing this for a minute now, so... I'm I mean, we, we've been trying to get a lot of guys in the ring, a lot of undefeated guys, the, uh, the former world champions, some of the top guys is right now, and, and they just like didn't take the fight. And people people always say that I'm a high, high risk and low reward, so that, I guess that's a play a part into it. So, But after April 10th, it ain't no denying me. I'm right there, and I'll be number one or whatever, number two, whatever, and I can fight whoever. Is this a, like a lemonade or something? like that is this something that you're supposed to showcase something that's supposed to are you promised a big fight after this win or something like that is there something that you're promised after this fight um i, I hopefully after this fight we get a, one of those big names that's, or somebody that has a belt or like the wba or something like that so hopefully you know after i do my thing on april 10th mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're shooting for is a world title by in the 2021 so they said you you're a high risk low reward Mm -hmm. <laughs> man that's some sophisticated way of dissing you <laughs> yeah. i mean I've, I've been hearing that like my whole career and like every almost every time i fight i always go through a bunch of opponents even up to my last fight i went through two or three opponents the fight before that i went through like five or six like guys just they yeah, take the fight or then it, they'd be like they say a week later they'd be like no or they'd be like we want more money we give them more money they still don't want to take the fight. So it'll just be a lot of confusion and stuff. But I'm just uh, thankful that Sergey took this fight. And now this is the fight that I've been waiting for all, for like two and a half years. This is the fight I've been waiting for. And now you guys really are going to see what I'm really made of and mm. my talent. And y'all really going to see something special on April 10th. And I just can't wait. That's why I'm, I'm always smiling and, and, and happy because <laughs> now I really get to showcase what I really do. And y'all going to see it on April 10th. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. What made you want to box, bro? Like, what made you want to get punched in the face for a career? I mean, well, first we try to, you know, try not to get hit. We try to get hit as less as possible. My dad teaches defense first, and that's the first thing you're going to learn when you come down my gym before you uh 
do anything else. You gonna he gonna teach you defense and how to throw your punches correctly. So that'd be the main goal, defense. But um, I got into boxing because uh, well, my whole family box. Uh, I had an older brother named Derek Poole, mm -hmm. uh, Ennis, and I had I have another brother named uh, Friday Quiet Storm uh, Ennis. They both for the uh, middleweight and super middleweight. So it was only up for, from there to follow their footsteps. And my dad also was a boxer too. So it was it was just installed in me. So it, everything came natural for for real. Hey, give me a day in life of the at the dungeon. You see your, your dad opened up a gym called the dungeon, so called the boys' dungeon. What's the day in life at the dungeon? What's that like? Uh the day in life of Boise Dungeon is uh Hard work and, and dedication, we going in. Uh, you come in the gym, you shadow box, and you uh, get right to work, whether it's bag work, sparring, pad work, uh, uh, drills. Uh, my dad had like different type of drills, defense drills, bag work drills, uh, the rope drills. So we we say we would probably be in the gym for, probably for about like two and a half hours, almost three hours, just working. So yeah, so your dad's your conditioning coach and your trainer? Uh yeah, my my dad's my trainer, my conditioning coach, and I do have another conditioning coach too, uh named Rob. Yeah, because so. you know I like your dad's training, man. I was looking at one of y'all yeah. training a couple of years ago. I saw y'all doing that Spider-Man climb up that wall. I was like, man, yeah. he giving him that country <laughs> strength. That's that, yeah. that's that old school country strength. Do you still work yeah. out like the same way like that all the time? Yeah, we work out the same way. I like I like the old fashioned way, uh, chopping the wood, uh, mm -hmm. uh, swinging a sledgehammer and stuff like that. It, that bring that natural strength out of you instead of a bunch of weights and and weights to slow you down. You can't throw your punches correctly uh, and stuff like that. So that's why I like the way that my dad uh, brought us up with the the hard labor and with the sledgehammer and climbing a rope, your own strength, like your own body weight and stuff like that, chopping the wood. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so. Preparing for fights, right? Preparing for fights. Since your brothers used to box, do they all give you little tips? Like, do they watch film? Do one of your brothers study film? Do one of your brothers study defense? And they all come to your pops and like, yo, let's do this. Let's try this out for your fight. Is that how it works I mean, as a family? I mean, we we all one big family. I mean, if somebody got to say something, I listen. And, and my brothers know because they've been in the ring. Mm -hmm. So they know they know what it's like. And my dad been in the ring also, too. He was a professional boxer, too. So whatever they say, I just do because I know it's going to work. And... Yeah. <laughs> How long do you train before a fight? Is it like 12 weeks, uh, eight weeks, uh, six weeks? What What is it? Uh, This one I had like two months. So two months for this one. Two months, and two months. my last fight was two months. Yeah. So that's all okay. you uh, really been in to get ready for a fight. You don't want to do too much and overtrain. Mm -hmm. I am not already be in shape already because I, I stay in the gym. So right, right after this fight and I do my thing and I get this uh, explosive one and knockout. I'm going right back in the gym on Monday. Ain't no celebrating, no partying. The job not done. The job not done. But when you knock somebody out in the first round, mm -hmm. it's very impressive. But also as an onlooker, it's like, damn, I want to see more fight. See, you know yeah. what I mean? Like Mike Tyson, yeah. man. We we all watched Mike, but you knew in the back of your head, damn, this thing is going to end. We've been waiting for months. You know, you got the prelims. You know, you've been watching right. for hours. What's that feeling like for you? Do you feel like, damn, I just trained all this time. I didn't really get a chance to showcase my skills. Um, no, nah, we, we don't get paid for overtime, man. Everybody know my slogan. Uh, I, I get in, I get out. I'm in and out like a robbery. So th that that's the goal. They get mm -hmm. in and get out. And then at night, you still get that same check. So I, I go in there and uh, seek and destroy. And, and if, if the knockout come early, then so be it. If it don't come early and I get it later on, that's fine. All right? Like, it doesn't matter to me. It, either way, when I get in that ring, I'm in my heavy place. I, I just be in there in my zone, having fun and doing what I love. And it's mm -hmm. hard to be somebody that do uh do what they love doing. But but has anybody challenged you? Um, like um, who was the most challenging? I thought a, a brew was putting up a good fight. I thought he was tough. Uh, when you were fighting him, you know, I seen you fight a bunch of fighters. Even Alvarez, you made him look like he doesn't even, he shouldn't even be in the same <laughs> ring. Do you feel like, because people may make comments about your opponents up to date, but do you feel like you've been challenged? I mean, well, at the end of the day, it's not my fault. For two and a half years, we've been trying to get these guys to step in the ring. Ever since I was about probably like 17 and 0, 18 and 0, we were trying to get these guys to step in the ring with me and they would not take the fight. Like and who? Who have you approached that we would know? 
It's it's so many it's it's so many that we can go down the list, but my if my dad was on here, he'd tell you everybody. He he know every he know more than me. I just I just hear the back end like oh this uh, this mean people turned you down and he was a top this top that or he was a former this former that. So I, I heard on the back end and I know it's true because my uh, my people's always tell me. <laughs> really, yeah. I, go ahead. Go ahead. I, would say, I would think you got Danny Garcia out there mm-hmm. in Philly. That might be a nice fight. You know what I mean? You got Sean Porter, you know, yeah. that might be a nice fight. You know, I hear you calling out Crawford. Yeah. You, I, I just, I, I want all of the of the big name fighters. Uh, this, you know, at, at the, not looking past Sergio Levin, that's uh, me doing my thing. And, uh, come home with that victory April 10th. After this fight, I just want all big names. Uh, it's time for me to to be that elite superstar, that preview star, and, uh, and show out. I and see shine. you. I seen your fight style and all that. Did you pick up a little things from Floyd and Pernell Whitaker and stuff like that? Are those guys that you idolize as far as in boxing because they didn't get hit a lot? Uh, yeah, most definitely. Well, my my favorite fighters uh, besides uh, Roy Floyd and Pernell Whitaker is my dad and my brother. So I watch a lot of all of them, and I try to mix it together and then do my own twist too. So, because mm, you're you know that you're you're a boxer that like to fight. And I, you know, mm-hmm. if I could put a scenario together, I would have you fight you guys. I would love to see you mm-hmm. get the belt from you guys and see how everybody got to mm-hmm. come through you now. Now you part of this scenario, you know what I mean? So right, I would, I feel I like would Terrence, love that fight. I feel like Terrence Crawford should fight his mandatory, Sean. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, Errol being the IBF or whatever, you know, he could get a little warm up fight, but I think that you should fight you guys your next fight. And then by November, one of those dudes should be ready to put their belts up there. So, you know. What you think about that scenario and that eliminated? Definitely, I definitely think that I, I love that. I love that fight right there. I want that. I want that fight, and uh, that def- that's another fight that I can showcase my skills and and be victorious again. And like I said, this this is only from here on out after this fight, and I win. It's only bigger and better fights, and it's it's my time to take over this uh, World Three division and uh, be that. Like I said, that pay per view star, that elite level star and, and this is the start starting April 10th. Mm. I like how he keeps saying the date horse. Yes. Wanna make sure y'all watch it. You wanna uh, make sure you <laughs> tune in. You gotta witness this thing. Yeah, got, yeah, got it, got it, it, got got it 24 in, KO, so you better tune in early. You gotta tune in early because <laughs> he's a one rounder and he loves it. He don't he don't want to work no overtime. That's not what he wanna do. <laughs> Man, yeah, I get we, we we in and out like robberies. <laughs> okay. I ain't like mad a robbery. at that. Man, you get where'd you get the name boots from? Um well when I was uh, growing up, my uh, mom uh, gave me the nickname Boops, B O O P S. Mm-hmm. And so when I was going to the gym when I was little and I was running around and stuff, my dad was saying Boops, come here, like or or tell me to come here or do this or do that. And people thought he was saying Boots like the shoes, and we just changed it ever since. So and it, it just stuck with me. So and I, I like it. <laughs> okay. All right, I'd have okay. been flipping that man. I'd have been like, you know, for the ladies, you know, for the dudes, and I knock them yeah. out. You know, I'd have been flipping that boots. Uh-huh. Like that. People <laughs> always ask me, they be like, uh, "Why you need boots? Because you always putting them on their boots, or you knocking them, off, knocking them off their shoes, or something like that." I'm uh-huh. like, that I'm might, like, nah, it's a long story. <laughs> so, yo, that that might could be his walkout music, chorus, knocking the boots. Ooh. Remember that song? <laughs> <laughs> knocking the boots. What what mo- what motivates what's, what's you? Up? What's your motivation? What like, what, what is it? Is it music? What's your motivation to be the greatest in boxing and have a legacy behind you? What what what's, what motivates uh, you to do that? My my motivation is my family. Uh, just like my brothers did it. They fought on Showtime. They fought on ESPN. Uh, my dad was like I said, was a former boxer. My motivation is them, and it's it's time that the, uh, my last name. I just take it to the next level. The end his last name to the next level, and and be that like I said, the pay per view star and. And playing it up there with the legends and greats, so that's that's my goal, and that's what I'm going to do is have my the end his last name be up there with the legends and the uh, greats and stuff like that. Hey, mm. kn- knocking the boots is by a group called H Town. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. see that was le- before my time. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know who H Town is. You need to point that out, huh? I like that. Okay, <laughs> this song came out probably before you was born, man. What are you, 23 now? Yeah, I'm 23. <laughs> 23 years of age. Um, it, but the, the hook, the chorus, somebody knocking the boots. <laughs> you might want to look at that because you know <laughs> what 
what you walk in the ring with is important. What what you re- what you wearing is important. All that is marketing. You know, that's all right. branding. You got a nice right. robe with the fur on it, and you mm-hmm. know them pretty colors, man. How did you choose? <laughs> how did you choose your robe? Was it a was it a? Did you have options? Did you have many? Um, sometimes I just uh, I just put a bunch of different colors together. Sometimes I ask my mom, or I wear her favorite color, or. Nice. Or I just, or I go on man and look at different teams and stuff like that and try to put the like color, colors together like that and stuff like that. So it's just a bunch of different ways I, I get my colors. So uh, who knows what I'm going to wear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like it. Hey, Boots, so what's your situation with management? Like, do you have like a, or you have like, man, like a big management company? Or like, what's your situation with management? Because I feel like your name and you, what you stand for and everything that your legacy and that you're trying to build, you 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 need to really be out there, you know, hitting these guys, man, for real. You need to fight some of the best guys out there right now. I don't think you really have too much to prove because I've seen guys with lesser fights than you and they got some mm-hmm. big stages that they walked on. You know what I mean? So what's your situation yeah. with management? I'm, uh, everything good. It's just we uh we just took a different route. Like, like I always say, everybody's route is different to the world championship. And mine's just a little slower, but it's working, and mm-hmm. we're gonna get there. Mm-hmm. Plus, you're young, man. You know, yeah. That's 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 working to your advantage. You haven't even got your full adult strength yet, and you knocking out people um in the first round. But I get the impression talking to you, man, like that. Like I feel like you so dedicated to boxing that it sounds like you never even been to a music concert. No, <laughs> you, I, I mean, <laughs> oh. <I, laughs> I go outside, but for for I just I rather be inside and just chilling and I guess like playing a game and and just chilling with my family and and just watching old boxing fights and just trying to better myself as a fighter. But like when I'm out of camp, I do I play basketball and I play football and I go play pool and stuff like that. Like just like to take my mind away from boxing a little bit because that's all I do is focus on boxing. Mm-hmm. But. But probably the next day, I'm right back in the gym. Hmm. So did you do any of that before you started boxing, playing football and basketball and all that before you started boxing? Did you? Um, like- yes. Yeah, I was playing basketball when I was, I'm going to probably say from like 9 to about like 12, 13. Mm-hmm. And then, well, I was playing basketball and boxing at the same time. And then once basketball wasn't uh, as fun as it was for boxing for me, I just, like, I'm just let it go and just keep boxing. What was it about basketball? Losing? You ain't like losing and stuff like that. That's what no, it was. no, no, no. Basketball was fun. It was fun for the for uh, while we was playing and stuff like that. But it just it wasn't like the same like passion or or vibes that I was getting from boxing. Like it just boxing. Like I said, when I step in that ring, it's me by myself. It ain't a team. And when I'm in that ring by myself, I'm in, I'm in my happy place. I'm in my zone. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Like I might not be cocky outside the ring. But some people say I'm a little cocky in the ring. <laughs> but I mean, I just I just be having fun, and, and it, they don't understand that being cocky and having fun is two different things. Mm-hmm. I saw that. I felt like with Alvarez, I'm gonna go back to that fight because that's when I really think you showcased your defense like ridiculously. You know that dude couldn't touch you. He missed a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I saw you. You know, one time he threw a punch and he missed, and you just kind of stood there. <laughs> you know what you know what moment I'm talking about? Yeah, he, he threw like a one, two, three. I was on it like inside. I slipped the one, I slipped the two, and then when he threw the hook, I just rolled out and I spent all the way. And then he tried to throw a right hand, and then I just froze. And then that was it. Yeah, you you were <laughs> I, don't know, huh? I don't know what I was doing. I just like I said, I'm just being there having fun. You never know what I'm gonna do. Like I'll just be in there having fun and be in my zone and like I always say, it's hard to be, it's gonna be hard to be somebody that's having fun and love what they've done. And people get frustrated from a fighter like that. Mm-hmm. Do you see the punches before they're being thrown? Like, how do you, is it a rhythm thing? You can, like, what do you, you got, see? Sometimes you sometimes you can see them and sometimes you just gotta, you gotta think what he gonna throw. You gotta have that, that perfect timing with your defense. And that's what it was, perfect timing. He threw that one, two, three. And I, when he threw the last hook, I just rolled out and I stopped. And that was it. Mm. Coming from Germantown, y'all got the dungeon and all that. Is there a lot of younger kids that's looking up to you right now? And that's like that you're training and you're looking that's looking up to you like, yo, I want to be like that. I want to be like you. Like, 
you know, disciplined and hungry and seeing your, you know, your go hard every day? Um, yeah, it's a lot of kids out here, oh, especially just from where I'm from, looking up to me, even if, whether it's football, basketball, boxing, they all look up to me and I appreciate it. And I'm going to just keep going and uh, keep motivating them and uh, tr try to lay down a blueprint and just hope, uh, just want all the kids to stay out the way and, and not get caught up in uh, the dumb stuff that's going on in Philadelphia right now and just stay in school and do what they need to do. That way y'all can get to that elite level and go to the high school and college and then go to the pros if, if you get good enough to do that. So I just want them to stay motivated and, and keep pushing. Anything can happen. Hey man, I, I see a lot of video footage like, you know, Shakur, you know, yourself, you know, Crawford, a lot of you guys go to all the fights too. You know, yeah. If you even if you ain't on the card, you there, you know, just mm -hmm. spectating because y'all fight fans. Man, who's been talking shit to you though behind the scenes? Like, which one of these boxers that have come up to you and, and say something? Uh, nobody, nobody. Nobody talk crap to you? No, nah, I, I, nobody called me out. No, nobody never say nothing behind the scenes. Nobody ever came up to me to my face and said nothing. Um, just I mean, everybody just. You know, the only people that say stuff is the little people that be on Twitter. But I don't pay them no mind. The little fake pages on Twitter, but I don't pay them no mind. So, now, I would be I would be trying to psych him out, horse, you know, yeah. because I see his greatness. I'm going to try to psych you out before you become, you know, before you reach your destiny. Nobody's psyching. Because I heard you once say, you know, you could do, you gave Crawford a compliment. You said he's great at everything he do. You're a switch hitter. Y'all both can do that. You could do everything he do, but better. Yeah. You know what I mean, and yeah, uh, definitely. You you yeah, have no I, I, no, I definitely believe that, and well, I, and I know that for a fact. Um, I'm faster, stronger, smarter. Um, he older, I'm younger. He fight right handed, I fight right handed. I, whatever, like I said, whatever he could do, I could do better. And he a great fighter. I don't take nothing away from him. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it's boxing, and if you want to be great, you gotta fight the best. So that's that's what's gonna happen. I noticed in, in um, boxing and all that, it's a lot of sparring going on. Did you spar anybody like Danny Garcia, anybody that's out there right now? Did they ever call you up for camp? Like, hey, man, you know, let's do a few couple of rounds. Um, no, they, they never called me for smart. I would have helped him for uh, Earl Spence, but he he didn't call. I would have I would have helped him, but never got a call. But I sparred Julian Williams. Um, I sparred a lot of guys. Um, you know, BJ Charles Conwell, I sparred him. Okay. Um, I just sparred uh, De Demond Nicholson. He 168. He about to fight Edgar Belanga mm -hmm. on April on April 24th mm -hmm. on ESPN. Uh, I, I've been sparred. I sparred a lot. It's, it's so many people I spar. I just keep going down the list. Uh, we'll be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> but it seemed like the elite never called them. You see that, homie? The elite uh, uh, never called them. Spar them. They, they scared of them. I think yeah. that's the problem. They need to, you, you need to put that out there. I think they ducking you. I think actually they're ducking you at this point right now. You know, you need to put that out there. Y'all y'all ducking me. I mean, you ain't the guy to walk into the ring and keep calling people out and this, that, and the third, because it's not about the money with you. You just want the belt. Give me the belt. Because a lot yeah, of I just I just want to be great and just take over. That's all. I ain't worried about nothing else but being great, taking over and becoming a legend and, and get about the game. Hmm. Hmm. You don't talk much about Errol Spence Jr. He's the, you know, him and Crawford are the two top king of the division right now. Why is that? Hmm. What do you think of him? Do you feel well, like... I had okay. said the same. I had said the same thing with uh, Errol Spence. I said whatever he can do, I can do better. Uh, like I said, I that fight. That's what I went to. I want those fights too. I want him. I want Terrence Crawford, uh, Errol Spence, Ugas, uh, Porter, all the top guys, and I will. I will get those guys right after I do my thing on the tenth. <laughs> it's who coming. You, who you think would be your biggest challenge out of all those guys? Um. Uh, we don't know. We're we gonna have to see when we get in the ring. Oh, I mean, because yeah. I I can adjust to any fighter, and it's, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm just my whole mindset is different. Like, if you want to come forward, okay, I can I can box if I have to. I can I can bang if I have to. And what what these guys don't know, they don't they they don't know how to prepare for me. Um, I can fight all around, and they don't know which way I'm gonna come. They don't know if I'm gonna box. They don't know if I'm going walk forward, they don't know if I'm gonna fight right handed or stay right handed or stay solid part. Like it's just too it's just too much. They don't know. So you you would we would have to see on fight night. 
I, I noticed that in a lot of your fights, you you switch to the southpaw stance a lot. I thought you were southpaw. Is that the thing that you have the equal power in both hands? That's how you fight. You have um, knockout power in both hands. Yeah, I, I have knockout power in both hands, but I don't know when I switch. Like, I just be I, in the motion. I that's that's be, what I'm saying. I can see your motions, the yeah, way you be moving. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I see the way that your body be moving. That's why I say I see a lot of Pinnell. I saw the way that your body was moving, and I'm like, I was. You know, I'm seeing this guy and I'm sure you knock a couple of people out. And I'm like, man, this dude is very powerful. That's why I know that they're ducking you. That's what I'm saying. I know that you're the guy that they're ducking because they don't really talk about you. Even when they're mentioning about the fights and who they want next, nobody mm-hmm. mentioned you. And I'm like, why not? You know, I wonder why not, you know? High risk. Uh, high risk, low, <laughs> low reward. <laughs> <laughs> high risk, low reward. But, but all that going to stop. Like I said, after, after my, I do my thing on, in a couple of weeks and I feel like this, this, this is the start of me breaking out and being at pay-per-view stars, it's, it's time. And I think it's time for me to, this is going to be the time that I take over this, this what we division starting with, with this guy. And hey, after hey, this, it's, it's only up. Hey Boots, when you get the belt, would you play the same games that these guys are playing with the belt? Or you just be telling your opponents, I want to fight the best. I want to fight another champion and let's get this on because you want to be the best of the whole division. Uh, I gra- if I well, when I grab one belt, I'm trying to grab them all. So uh, whoever, else, whoever, whoever else got the belts, that's what I want to fight. And I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm going to unify and then just go ahead and move up to 54, mm. just like oh, that. And I'm, oh, I'm gonna do the, do the same thing at 54 and then move up to 60. Oh. Hey, I noticed. I noticed a lot of them guys are starting to leave 147. I heard Danny say he's going to 154. I think Dermot said he was leaving. Maybe because you're you coming up right now. That's the problem. They don't want to have to. Bump you think they the running from? You think they running from boots? Yeah, come on now. <laughs> come on. Come on now. Come on. You have to bump into. You going if you stand in 147, you gonna have to bump into this man. Come on now. Man. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm only getting better, and I just can't wait. I just can't wait to perform and show show the world this talent that I have. But um, yeah, I mean, I did hear uh, that Danny was moving up to 54. I, I didn't hear about Keith Thurman moving up to 54 though. I thought he was yeah. saying at 47. Yeah, he said he was going to move up. I seen. I think yeah, he said he wanted to move up too. Cause I was like, ah, why are everybody leaving from 47 right now? Maybe I mean, you. Should. I mean, 147, the best division, the best division right now, and uh, mm-hmm. all, that's where all the fighters at, uh, all the great fighters at 147, and we're gonna see who we're gonna see who's gonna be at the top at the end. Yeah. Man, I like it. I like, this, yeah. I like it. Uh, let me ask you this: um, I love that you have a plan. You want to move up after unifying the, the division to 154 and then to 160. So I know you're thinking ahead. You play in chess. You're thinking, man. You're thinking boxer. What are your thoughts about your business? What kind of things outside of the ring have you have you planned on doing as you start to accumulate more wealth? Uh, well, me and my brother just started like looking at houses and stuff right now. So we we just grabbing houses and uh, starting to sit on them. So that's that's the plan. Uh, after this fight, we're gonna grab some houses and just sit on them, let them build equity, and then fix them up, and then do what we gotta do with them. And so that's one of the things I want to start. Um, and I kind of, I kind of want to start like a little like a daycare program, but I know that's gonna be a lot, so I'll probably push that on the back back end for right now. But I'm gonna just focus on the houses and stuff, and fixing them up and get money back like that and stuff. That way, I have money just to. You know, play around with and stuff like that. I like that plan, man. I like it. You like that real estate? Also? Yeah, I like that real estate. And he's talking about daycare, he's talking about giving back to the youth too. You know, he's talking yeah, about that's, like that. That, that. That's what I want to do. I want to uh, do like a little daycare center, like around uh, the area that I, I grew up in, and or not too far away for like all the kids that, that don't have nowhere to go that's coming up and stuff like that. So, hmm. I like that, man. That's what bridge business is, right? That's what bridge business is all about. Uh, Abe, so did you, I'm going back to your social life, man. Did you have a date? Like, do what, you know, are you that focused where it's just, you don't really have time for a personal relationship like that? Oh yeah, I I, I got a girlfriend now and I just, I mean, I do, I go outside, do stuff like that, but it's not too much of it. Like I just, I try to be, you know, you focus on the back end. You focus, 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 I, just, <laughs> I just want I just want to be great. And, and mm. the only way you can be great is just you gotta focus and lock all the way in on this boxing game. And that's the only way you're gonna get better. And that's why I always uh like I study a lot of uh of fighters like Floyd and Roy Jones and I, like I said, I still watch my brothers. I just started watching James Tony. Mm. I like mm. I like James Tony. Mm-hmm. He, he got a, a, a lot of slick moves on the inside. Mm-hmm. Um what about Bernard? 
I, I never really watched Bernard like that. Really? Because Roy Jones. Yeah, I know. Uncle Roy Jones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> Jones. I never, I never really watched Bernard Hopkins like that. But um, I you know I watched Pernell. I I just started watching Sugar Ray Leonard. I like Sugar Ray Leonard a lot. Mm. He, what was the showboating? The, the, the hand speed, the showboating, and all that. That's what you like to watch. The hand speed, the his, showboating. Yeah, his hand speed, showboating, and then he he have good like leg movement. I also watch Andre Ward too. I can't forget about Andre Ward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Monster. if you, uh, so if we was to say who your who's your top five boxers, who's on your list? Who would they be? Like all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, just five. You can give me five, you know. You can give some honorable um, mentions. Uh, That's hard. hard. I'm Roy Floyd, Pernell. I like Mike Tyson. Ooh. I like Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. I like five. Sugar Ray Leonard. I like okay, Sugar Ray Leonard. That's six. And James Tony. <laughs> that's seven. And Pernell. That's eight. Wow. <laughs> Your top five got eight you, boxers. You, you can't. You can't. I can't, I can't make it. And there was no order though. It just, that was you, just me just saying it though. Like I don't know. It's too. It's too many great uh, legends that's out here. You can't just put, like put it in a small section. Like it's too many, too many greats. And you gotta. Uh, I don't know. That's crazy. It's too many great legends out here. It's too hard. Like that's a hard question, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a hard question. So, all right, so in, in your playlist right now, what's your five top artists right now that you listen to on your playlist right now in music? Um, Lil Dirt, uh, Lil Baby, uh, Meek, uh, uh, Uzi, mm. and who else in there? Mm. Dark and, baby. Well, my 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 cousin Nello, he he <laughs> up and coming rapper. What's and his my name? other cousin, Nello. Nello. N I L L O. Yeah, yeah, Nello. Mm. Is Nello gonna bring you out to the ring on April tenth? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you, man, that might be a good look for your cousin, man. Like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. either him or Meek. <laughs> you know, yeah. Hey, what do you think? What do you think about all these extra belts and stuff that's in the division? Would you like to be one of them interim champions and all of that stuff like that? Would you take one of those belts like that? As far as being, you know, waiting your turn. I mean, if I have to, I, and I don't have no choice, I will. But at the end of the day, I just want to be. I want to have all the main world titles, and like I said, collect all four and go ahead about my business and go move to fifty four. So mm-hmm. I, I, I would rather have all the, the major belts. But if I do get an opportunity to fight for an interim belt, I will take it, though. Mm-hmm. You'll take it? Mm-hmm. Uh, man, look, I'm excited about your career, man. I'm excited about April 10th mm-hmm. with, with Sergey Limpinet. That's going to be a great fight. You know, it's your chance to show the world. You know, now it's Showtime Championship Boxing. Next one be pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. We're going to get this money yeah, right okay. now, man. What is it you want to say to the world right now, people who's watching, boxers that's watching, folks who don't know you yet? What you want to say to them? Um, just continue to keep watching me uh, on my my uh, journey to the world championship uh, title and just keep watching me. And uh, you, gonna, you you guys will continue to keep seeing some, something special each and every fight, every time I fight, I give you guys something different. Mm-hmm. They, they never know what I'm going to do. So you don't know how I'm going to come. So just keep uh, enjoying this journey into this uh, world title championship and keep watching me. And that's it. Okay. You want to say something in closing, Horse? Hey, man, I want to say, you know, you tell you and your father, keep going on with that hard work that you're doing. I love what he's doing with the kids down there in that dungeon and all that. I love what y'all doing, man. Keep pushing for greatness, man. And, you know, congratulations. And come back to Bridge Business and show one of those belts off after this, man. Uh, most definitely. I uh, definitely appreciate it. And y'all got to come down to the gym one day, man. Just 
Oh, be around. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, you just, we was waiting for you to say yeah, that, That's right? I was waiting for the invite. I was, <laughs> that was waiting like, for what's that, that Philly <laughs> hospitality? What is it, brotherly love? Where, where is it? I'm, you know, so we'll, we, we, we will definitely um, be coming down, bro. It's great to meet you. You know, I'm already following you. Jerron Boots in this, man. Get this man a round of applause, man. This dude is the next champ. And he promised, you heard him, that when he gets the belt, he's going to come back on Bridge Business. Yes, yes. It's official. Yeah, y'all, y'all got my word. I'm definitely coming back. As soon as I get it, I'm, I'm calling. <laughs> there it is. Okay, we'll be the April 10th Showtime Championship Boxing. Make sure y'all there, too. Peace. All right. Peace.